outside right now, it's a beautiful Friday in Okinawa. And as many of you know, the Japanese word for Friday is Kinyobi, which literally means gold day. In the Japanese week, there is no iron day, there is no silver day, there is no lead day. Only gold was considered worthy of having its own day. Okay, so I want to ask, what is it with us and gold? Okay, is there maybe some rule book to human civilization where it says in a very serious tone of voice, you know, there is this metal called gold, it's element number 79 in the periodic table, and that is what you're going to use for your currency and where is jewelry, and that's what you're going to put in your vaults and in your treasure chests and go to war for very important element number 79, don't forget. Okay, so, no. no. Our fascination with gold has uh, arisen without any such instructions. This is just that we are simple creatures and we are attracted to bright and distinctive colors. And it just so happens that in a world full of gray metals, there is one metal that is yellow. And so, our question for today is, why is gold yellow? Now, is that even a legitimate question to ask? I and mean, perhaps there is a rule book to the universe where it says, Yes, and element number 79 is going to be yellow. Also, element number 8 is good for burning things. Bunnies are good at hopping, and frogs are good at jumping. Uh, but no, we ain't come this far in the scientific revolution to keep thinking in these terms. So we understand that all of these phenomena of everyday life must be arising from some deeper, more fundamental laws that are closer to the ultimate nature of reality. So now with renewed vigor and the confidence that an answer should exist, okay, why is gold yellow? And the answer turns out to be remarkable, and is one of my favorite stories in all of science, and it is so deliciously counterintuitive that even though it has been known for something like 40 years, it has uh, still managed not to percolate into our general culture. Okay? The papers from the time when these things were first understood have magnificent titles, like this one, that reads Relativity and the Periodic System of Elements. Okay, so relativity. So these guys are telling us that the color of gold, as well as some other phenomena, like the fact that mercury is a liquid, have to do with relativity, with the strange and wonderful behavior of objects near the speed of light. Now, the thing that most of you know about the speed of light is that it acts as a universal speed limit. So when Han Solo tells Chewbacca, Chewie, take us to light speed, in the real world, that doesn't work. So Chewie can't take us to light speed. The entire structure of space-time conspires to prevent him from following this simple instruction. And the particular way in which that happens is that as you try to accelerate closer and closer to the speed of light, you start getting heavier and heavier, so that accelerating further becomes harder and harder and eventually impossible. So the story that I want to tell you today is that because of this effect, because of mass increase near the speed of light, gold turns out to be yellow. All right? Now, today I spent all morning talking to my scientist friends around campus, and uh, I was asking them, do you know why gold is yellow? And they say no. And I was telling them, well, it's, it's relativity, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. And I'm telling them it's mass increase near the speed of light, and they still have no idea what I'm talking about. So, you know, I, I am sure that our main audience are all smart people and have already figured out the story from these clues, but for the sake of my friends, let's fill in some more details about how this actually works. So, the first counterintuitive twist in this story is that it's not about the color yellow at all. This is a story about the color blue. Ordinary gray metals are gray because they reflect light in all the colors uh, of the visible spectrum. And when it comes to yellow, gold is a plain ordinary metal. It reflects yellow uh, just as a metal should. What is special about gold is its reaction to the color blue. Instead of reflecting blue, it decides to absorb it. So what we see as the yellow color of gold is really the overall incoming white light with blue subtracted. The question is then, why is gold absorbing blue? And this might sound, at the face of it, quite scary. So ordinary metals don't absorb light at all, and this one does, so something is radically different here. But in fact, it's not as bad as that. Ordinary metals also absorb light, it's just that they don't do it at the visible colors. Instead, they like to absorb ultraviolet. 
So the special thing about gold is that it sh takes this behavior of ordinary metals and shifts it from the ultraviolet towards the visible blue. So the question of why is there a gold day in the Japanese week then becomes why should it decide to absorb blue instead of UV? Okay. And at this point, we should start getting more physics -y. We should start replacing all of these names of colors with some number. Okay, so what's a good number that distinguishes ultraviolet light from blue visible light? Well, one such number is energy. As we know well from getting sunburned, ultraviolet light is more energetic than visible. So really the question is, why is this uh, one special metal deciding to absorb light of lower energy than usual? And in order to start answering that, we need to remind ourselves what matter is actually made of. Okay, so matter is made of atoms. Atoms are made of electrons orbiting around the nucleus. And what usually happens when matter absorbs light uh, is that the energy of the light gets picked up by one of the outermost electrons in the atom, and the electron uses it to jump up uh, into the next available orbit. So when we are saying that the material uh, absorbs high energy ultraviolet light, we are really saying that there is a large gap between the orbits. And if it's absorbing low energy blue light, then uh, we are really saying that there is a smaller gap between the orbits. So the special thing about gold is that the orbits in the gold atom are closer together than they should be. And if we look in a bit more detail, we will see that what's actually happening here is that it's the top orbit that's changing. The top orbit is shifting down in gold as compared to an ordinary metal, while the next orbit below is more or less staying put, and that is how the gap between them shrinks. Okay. So what's special about gold, the reason we go to war over the stuff, is that the topmost orbit uh, in its atom is lower than usual. Why is that? Well, I told you why. Okay. Because of mass increase near the speed of light. Now, you know, I'm looking at my friends' faces and I'm seeing that they are still not quite getting. So, let's go deeper. So, are we saying that when an electron gets heavier, its orbit becomes lower? Oh, yes, we are. Well, how might that come about? To understand that, we need to start stepping away from the schoolbook caricature of what an atom looks like, from the solar system here and remind ourselves that electrons really obey the rules of quantum mechanics. And then they are not quite little points going around the nice circular orbits, but much more like waves spread out throughout the entire circle of the orbit. And the thing about these waves is that heavy particles have waves that are shorter. So, what happens when an electron gets accelerated close to light speed is that it gets heavier, its wavelength gets shorter, and because the or wave has to span the orbit, then the orbit must shrink as well. And that's how we go from absorbing ultraviolet towards absorbing blue. Yeah. And this is how mass increase near the speed of light manages to give us the golden twinkle bright. Now, what we haven't said is, what is it that gets an electron anywhere close to the speed of light. We usually don't think about such things happening in chemistry. And here the thing to understand is that the gold atom is a bit of a monster. It is one of the largest atoms that are commonly found in nature. Its nucleus has a whopping 79 protons inside, and their combined electrical interaction, attraction, is uh, what is capable of accelerating an electron that gets too close all the way near the speed of light. Okay. So, there we go. That's the story. All the relevant laws of physics that are needed uh, for telling what I just told you have been around since the 1920s. But as far as I'm aware, it took about 40 or 50 years after that before uh, this whole explanation was pieced together. And the reason is that in this story, there is something paradoxical. There is something that was putting off uh, people from thinking in this direction. You may have noticed that in what I've told you so far, there hides a contradiction. Because on one hand, the electrons that are in charge of responding to light, deciding what gets reflected and what gets absorbed, are the outer electrons inside the atom. On the other hand, the electrons that are getting close to the nucleus, accelerated and then therefore heavier, are the ones 
closest to the nucleus on the inside of the atom. So that makes no sense. In order for this to be the mechanism behind the color of gold, an electron must be somehow doing both things at once. But that, of course, is exactly what electrons in quantum mechanics do. Okay? They are not quite waves going around in a circle around the nucleus. They are rather more like clouds of probability to find an electron distributed all over the volume of the atom. It's just the higher orbits are just ones that are more concentrated on the outside. The lower orbits are more concentrated on the inside. But both, in principle, span both here and there. And so this is how a single electron can both be on the inside right next to the nucleus getting accelerated to near the speed of light and getting heavier because of it, and at the same time be outside uh, reacting uh, accordingly to light and deciding to absorb the blue. All right, now we're almost there. Gold is almost yellow. But <laughs> something is still off. Because remember that in order to uh, decide how a material reacts to light, what is important are the gaps, the distances between the different orbits. It is not enough for the top orbit to come down. It is also important that the next orbit below doesn't. Only then the distance between them can shrink and we can turn ultraviolet absorption into blue absorption and make our gold yellow. So why does everything we just said apply only to the topmost orbit? So how come we have two orbits that are behaving in these radically different ways? Aren't they just the same thing, only one of them is a bit higher and the other is a bit lower? It turns out that this is much the same question as why do atoms be behave as Lego blocks? Why do they attach to each other in molecules at fixed angles? Why does chemistry work the way it does? Now, now are, are you feeling it? Yes, the, the ground is getting more and more sacred as we talk here. I'm, I'm not a religious guy, but uh, just as a precaution, this is a good point to take off one's shoes. So an electron is not quite a point running around in a circle inside the atom. It is not quite a wave running around in a circle either. And it is not quite a cloud of probability distributed throughout the atom's volume. It is all those things. It is much more like a wave of probability. Uh, distributed throughout the volume of the atom. And this here, these waves of probability, this is the beating heart of quantum mechanics, the secret operating system of the universe revealed by the great sages of the 1920s, the fundamental magic behind the myriad phenomena of the everyday, and the ultimate reason why gold manages to be yellow after all. The thing about waves is that when two waves meet, they can either add up and reinforce each other, or they can cancel out and subtract. So when we ask ourselves, what is the electron's probability to find itself at the center near the nucleus and feel its mighty electrical attraction, what we should really be doing is we should be taking the waves of electron probability coming in from all the directions in the atom uh, at once, adding up at the center, meeting each other at the center, and deciding what to do. And then for one orbit, it might happen that these waves will add up, reinforce each other, and create a blob of probability for the electron to be in the center, get accelerated heavier, and the orbit will come down. Now, but, or for a different orbit, it could be that the waves coming in from different directions in the atom are opposite to each other, they subtract, and then you get no probability for the electron to be at the center near the nucleus and no effect. So this is how it's possible for the top orbit to come down while the next orbit below stays put. This is how we can get from absorbing UV light to absorbing blue light. This is how we can get from gray to golden. Okay, thanks to mass increase near the speed of light with a healthy dose of help from the probability wave fundamental nature of matter at the quantum level. Now, I dare you not to become a scientist. Thank you very much. <laughs>